Ah, diabetes. Scourge of the earth. Dirt simple to fix. <clears throat> Here's what I've learned about diabetes since working with my first health consulting client. Probably around, uh, I'm guessing probably around 1986 was the first person I worked with to resolve their so-called diabetes. So let's see, how can I say this? Because I don't believe you can cure anything. Um, better way to say it is you can take a pathology like diabetes, which is a collection of random symptoms that stupid doctors assign some bogus name to, like in this case, uh, pancreatic exhaustion and inability to deal with the sugar load in a person's system they call diabetes. So now we've got this fancy word we can talk about. So, oh man, where to start? It's such a large terrain of information. All right, I, I'll give you a summary here. I've probably worked with well over a thousand people resolving their diabetic symptoms. And the longest it ever took to completely get a person off insulin and get their blood sugar back in the 100 range, we'll say, was two weeks. And that person had been injecting insulin for 20 years. Now, when you inject insulin, that basically shuts down your pancreas. And so you can't just stop injecting insulin. You have to reduce your insulin injections and also reboot your pancreas and also change a whole bunch of other things so that you can resolve your requirement for shooting up with insulin every day. Most people, it takes two or three days to completely reverse their diabetes or pre-diabetes symptom. Here's a, here's a, uh, a little tip. <clears throat> if you eat food and after you eat food, you have a energy dip of some sort, other people, other people or some people call it food coma. So if you feel an energy dip after you eat, you are pre-diabetic. Now that's something to think about. So when I eat, I either feel no change in energy or because I eat a lot of pre-digested food or let's see, how can I say this? Food in a state where it can be very rapidly either assimilated and stored or converted directly into energy. That, now that's very rare. Because normally when you eat food, you metabolize it into, or metabolize, you, you break down the complex food components into smaller components like amino acids, minerals, and antioxidants, all sorts of things. And those are stored different places, like amino acids are stored in your liver. So the whole conversation about complete proteins is totally bogus because there is no such thing as complete protein requirement for your body because every time you eat a protein it's broken down into amino acids and stored in your liver. Then when you require one, your liver manufactures a complex amino acid out of these short polypeptides is what they're called. They're very short chain uh, amino, uh, amino acid complexes they are going to build proteins. So that whole uh, conversation about complete proteins is just, it's bogus, always has been. Now, diabetes, so, relates to sugar. Now, notice when I, I opened, I said, certainly scourge of the earth. And at the same time, dirt simple to fix. Now, there is a difference between easy and simple. I'll give you an example. Easy is someone who gets up in the morning, throws on their clothes, jumps in their car, and goes out into their day. And they're going to, you know, go to work or go see a movie, run errands, whatever they have to do. Simple is the way that I start my day if I have to go out, which I, I do my best to arrange to always be home. <laughs> if I go out, I know how long I'm going to be out, and I take enough water and usually superfood brew, which I'm drinking right here. I'll have a slug, which is chocolate and coconut and fresh orange juice, um, hemp seeds, roliola, camu, camu, lots of different, uh, uh, lots of different 
ingredients which have micronutrients. So when I go out, I pack enough water and enough chocolate bliss super brew, superfood brew, to get me through the day so that I don't have to ever consider, I give zero consideration to where I'm going to get my food and water from while I'm out. Because I guarantee whatever food and water you get while you're out, it ain't real food or real water. You don't want to drink it. You don't want to eat it. So that's the difference between simple and easy. So simple for me is extremely simple because I always keep a, a gallon of uh, chocolate bliss brewed up in my fridge. So when I go out, I just fill up some uh, containers. Let's see, I got to, I've got some of these... Uh, liter containers that, uh, you know, this one has a label on it for one of our products that we used to manufacture that we don't anymore, but maybe we will again. And I fill one, one of these up with, uh, with uh, water and one with chocolate bliss if I'm going to be out during the day. And I'll tell you another trick I do. Here, and this is again the difference between simple and easy. Simple is you, you do a minuscule amount of planning to get a massive benefit. And this is also what most people do not understand about rednecks. Rednecks, I'll, I'll explain redneckism to you because I are one. I grew up in rural Oklahoma and Texas. I didn't know there was such thing as a redneck because everybody around me was a redneck. Here's what redneckism is in a nutshell. Creating a, um, exerting a minimum effect for maximum effort and also having fun. Like when my um, grandfather determined to put a bathroom onto our house out in rural Oklahoma, this country house that we, it was on this old farm that uh, or it was an old house on a farm that we used to go to on the weekends and also I guess a lot of times during the week and my grandma finally told him once that in, until you get an indoor bathroom on this house I ain't going out here anymore because I'll tell you outhouses are nasty if you're a redneck you'd know that <clears throat> and if you are a redneck you do know that um, so there was a big conversation about how this was going to happen because you got to have a septic system. And so the, the guy comes out to dig the hole for the septic system. And I remember very vividly the guy and my grandpa, I guess my grandpa, the, the, the uh, guy with the backhoe, my dad and I were standing all in a row. Guy with the backhoe has got a piece of wheat chewing it on it in his uh, mouth. And he says, um, well, I can take a couple of days. I can dig that hole with a backhoe. Or I got some dynamite. And my grandpa said, let's use the dynamite. My dad said, yep, we need to use that dynamite. This is the difference between redneckism and normal peopleism, I guess. Or uh, non-redneckism, I choose to know. Um, so anyway, this guy goes out there and, you know, they use this bore tool and dig down, I don't know, must have been six or eight feet, dropped a charge of dynamite down, ran the wire over. We got behind this uh, mound of uh, dirt, I remember being there, and guy twisted the, the uh, detonator and it went off. Now, <clears throat> remember I said regnetism is uh, minimum effort, maximum effect, and fun? Well, this might have been just a little bit too much fun because the guy obviously did not know what he was doing handling dynamite because he put so much dynamite in this hole that it blew out. I mean, it blew out a hole big enough for a septic tank. And yeah, I don't know if you've ever worked with dynamite or been around digging out hard dirt and rock like in Oklahoma, but it, you know, it takes a lot of energy to dig a hole big enough for a, you know, huge, I don't know how big the thing was, 100 gallons or 200, I don't know how how big it was. It was, it was uh, way taller than, than me, the tank they put in. But anyway, so it blew hunks of rock and, and dirt all over us. 
I couldn't hear for better part of the rest of the day. The concussion was so bad that we were all up against this embankment. It blew us all flat against the ground. So that's an that's a a um, example of uh, redneckism. So when I talk about simple, it's a very it's very redneck results oriented, uh, getting stuff done sort of thing. So I keep a gallon of chocolate bliss in my fridge. And I also take these containers and I'll fill them up halfway with um, water or halfway with chocolate bliss or whatever superfood brew. I mean, I'm just using this. This is what I do. Do whatever you like to do. I keep these things half full of fluid and in a freezer. So what does that do? That gives me a cold pack here, which all the, the liquid is contained and I don't have to worry about ice melting or anything. And I take these things and I, I take one that has water, fill it up the other halfway with water, one with chocolate bliss and fill it up another halfway. Throw those in the car, I'm ready to go. So it takes me maybe an, an extra minute or two to get ready to go. The difference is I never have to stop for water or food. And I maintain my requirement for a equilibrium of health that is far different than most people. So now let's get back to diabetes. I wrote down here, I just took some ra rapid notes, and I wrote down, oh man, 16 big contributing factors to diabetes, and each of those break out into four or five different things. So what is that? I don't know, 50, 60, 70 different contributing factors to diabetes. Here's the thing. You can go to your doctor, which is an idiot, by the way. Ah, idiot. He's ignorant, or she, because all they learn in school is what the pharmaceutical industry and the drug industry put into the curriculum, because the pharmaceutical, the, uh, the surgical and pharmaceutical industry are who creates the curriculum for doctors. So, for any easily reversible set of symptoms like diabetes, depression, cancer, arthritis, really, I mean, pretty much everything except harsh genetic problems like Marfa, maybe, are really easy to reverse with um, a few minor changes. And even Marfa, you could probably, I've never heard anybody doing any large, large studies on how to deal with that naturally because there's so few people that have it. So, all these little contributing factors, I'm just going to, I'm going to share them all with you, and I don't know how long it'll take, probably more than one video for sure, or one recording, if you're listening to this as an audio, or reading it as content. Um, your doctor will never learn about contributing factors because there's no money for him, or his surgical or pharmaceutical masters, and they are the Dark Lords. I mean, if you've ever seen Star Wars, Big Pharma and Big Surgery, AMA, FDA, they're all Sith Lords. I mean, they are the evilest, darkest, blackest, hardest, uh, evil people that you'd ever come across. So you want to steer clear of them completely. So your doctor's not going to be able to help you with diabetes. The only thing he can do is uh, uh, he can give you some insulin, and when that stops working, he can hack off limbs. Oh, I got a good story. I'll tell you two stories. Um, one story is, um, well, actually, I guess these both these stories are about salt water and enzymes, uh, which is sort of the basic building blocks of health I've been talking about since the mid-'80s with people. Um, we had a, a woman who cleaned our house. She came in one day. She always looked pretty bad. She came in one day and she was just ash and gray. I mean, she looked like she was, what's that uh, show, uh, Walking Dead? She, she looked like she had the zombie shuffle and the skin to match. 
And so she comes in and um, she spoke Spanish and neither my wife or I speak very much Spanish. We were finally able to ascertain from her she was diabetic and her blood sugar at that point, she checked it that morning, was 344. Now, <clears throat> 344 is extremely high and she was very, very overweight too. So a person who is extremely obese and has a high blood sugar level over 300 for them to be up white upright and walking was pretty darn impressive so anyway we gave her a bottle of these uh, enzymes which I'll talk with you about later we gave her a bottle of enzymes and we gave her very specific instructions you know Unfortunately, there was a language barrier, and so she was able, unable to follow the instructions. However, she did come back in uh, two weeks, because at that time, this is a long time ago, I choose to know what happened to her. Um, uh, she was cleaning her house on a two-week basis, and she came back two weeks later, so what's that, 14 days, and she completely misunderstood how to take these enzymes. And all she was doing was randomly taking one in the afternoon. Now I'll go over how to take enzymes and where to get enzymes and what enzymes are, you know, what I think are best. You can do your own research if you require. So she completely misunderstood how to take these enzymes. And she took one a day for 14 days. So let's see what that is. Um, let's see, based on the price of these enzymes... Uh, they're 67 cents a piece. She took 14. So she, if she bought these, we just gave them to her. Um, she, in, um, she consumed $9.38 worth of enzymes in a 14-day 14 14 period. And her blood sugar dropped. I can't believe she was doing anything else, so I attribute this all to enzymes. Um, her blood sugar dropped from 344 to 177. So that's roughly a 50% drop. What's 177 times 2 is... Yeah, I mean, it's roughly, you know, 48% to 50% drop. And if she'd done the way she we told her to take them, it would have been... It w her blood sugar, sugar would have dropped way lower because it was the same protocol we use with all our diabetic clients. I'll tell you another story. Um, I had a woman, long-term client, call me up one day. This is probably back in 2007 or 8. She said, um, can you see me today? And I um, normally took, um, uh, I was normally booked pretty far in advance with clients. And so um, she was really insistent and been a long-term client. So I had her come in really early one morning. Here's what she told me. Now, this is no joke. She shook her head, looked down, and said that she was scheduled for a radical amputation in 10 days. I said, what the heck does that mean? Radical amputation of what? She said, both hands, both feet. I said, why? She said she had advanced neuropathy because of her diabetes. I said, why is this the first time I'm hearing about you have advanced neuropathy and uh, intense diabetic problem? Yeah, anyway, so, um, uh, and it had also, this had also leached most of her uh, savings, so she was dead broke too. So all I could give her was um, uh, enzymes and salt, I think was the only thing she was able to purchase. And my agreement with her was that, look, if I don't want to waste my time talking with you if you're going to go and turn yourself over to the butchers to hack stuff off your body. That's a waste of my time. If you're going to do that, you should get out and go get hacked. And if you'd like to take my advice, all I ask is that you, you know, honor my time. And if you're making progress, you simply defer your amputation. You don't have to put it, you don't have to Skip it. I mean, if you think it's a good thing to hack off your arms and feet, uh, great. My only request is as long as you're making progress. In other words, as long as your blood sugar is coming down and staying down, you defer your amputation. Now, here's what happened. And I didn't tell her this because I knew, based on past experience, if I told a person how fast they were going to reverse their 
diabetic pathology random symptoms, sometimes they tended to, to uh, self-sabotage and the protocols wouldn't work because they found ways to to uh, uh, crater or um, interfere with the protocol. So I never told anybody what to expect. I just said, um, go do this for uh, five days and come back and we'll see where you are. The only thing we're the only thing we're trying to do this time, this is what I told her, is we're trying to slightly increase your energy a little bit so that we can actually start to reverse your diabetic symptoms. Now, I know what's going to happen. I know I did not know it was going to be so profound for her. So she goes off, you know, bought some enzymes and salt. What, what, let's see, that's uh, 80 bucks worth of product. And she she took she followed the protocol, so she was probably doing about uh, she was probably doing five to six enzymes a day, and I'll go over the protocols later on about how how we suggest you do enzymes. So she goes off for five days and comes back, and I said, "What happened?" She said, "Well, it's just hallelujah, been a miracle." <laughs> All the feeling in my hands and feet has returned. I said, really? Just from a few enzymes and salt? That's pretty impressive. Um, like I'd never seen that before. And I said, uh, so, um, you're scheduled for that radical amputation of your hands and feet in another five days. Are you going to get your uh, hands and feet hacked off? <laughs> uh, I won't say all the explicatives she said um, but no and she had some really colorful remarks about the um, lack of competency on the part of her doctor and that she was going to go and march in his office and tell him what she thought about them too now what was interesting was she actually did go into this doctor's office and tell him how incompetent he was and told him what had happened to her and for you know a few uh, dollars a week how she had completely reversed her symptoms with enzymes and salt and also water and ask if this doctor would like to be in touch with me to ask me about our protocols and of course guess what even if this doctor was interested in contacting and asking he would lose his license I, I'm not kidding about this he would lose his license if he had inter any interaction with us and then shared that information with any of his clients. So that's my experience with diabetes is it's, it, like I said, it's dirt, simple to fix and simple is different than easy. And so what I'm going to do in this series of recordings is my goal is to give you some great information about contributing factors and also some very redneck sort of simple fixes. Minimum effort, maximum effect, maybe have a little fun along the way. So here's the first little experiment. I'd like you to take your blood sugar and then after you take your blood sugar, go to your kitchen. And this is a challenge a friend of mine in New Zealand issued me here recently. He said, well, so if a person, you know, listens to one of your recordings, how about the first recording you tell them something tangible they can do in their kitchen with what they have on hand to dramatically lower their blood sugar? And I really thought about that for a while because, you know, well, what's the, the answer? And the answer is actually really simple. Take your blood sugar, go into the kitchen, and... Take a liberal pinch of salt, or if you have an eighth of a teaspoon measuring spoon, take an eighth of a teaspoon level uh, salt, whatever salt you've got, and dump it in a quart mason jar, and put a little water in it to swish it around so the salt dissolves, and then fill it up, fill it up the mason jar. Then drink that water, and take a walk around the block, and check your blood sugar again. Now here's what you're looking for. If you are chronically, massively dehydrated, which most people are, 
then you will see a blood sugar change, sometimes a dramatic blood sugar change. Your blood sugar may spike up, and it may spike way down. Now, there's different reasons for that. Um, if it spikes, if it spikes down, that means that the the um, the effect the water is having on you is uh, lowering the viscosity of your fluids, your primarily your blood, because that's what you're checking with your your meter. It's also reducing the viscosity of your uh, lymphatic system too, which is a whole different conversation. If your blood sugar spikes up, that means that you have been so dehydrated that sugar has been collecting in, in your tissues and now that you have a surplus of water then the sugar is starting to or the substances that are attached to sugars are beginning to become liberated from your tissues and circulate in your blood. Now if your blood sugar spikes up, man me personally if, if I saw that in a client, I would, I would say the best thing you can do is keep doing that over and over. You, another pinch of salt, quart of water, mix it up, drink it, another walk around the block. And you keep doing that until your uh, blood sugar stabilizes. And, and oh, by the way, don't worry about the, uh, the, uh, the blood sugar number right now because when you start going through the detoxification process and um, begin to liberate sugar substances that are that are chelated or bound to sugars and pull those out of your tissue and also reduce the viscosity of your blood you're going to have some wild swings in blood sugar in the beginning and then later on your blood sugar will stabilize so the primary experiment here is you, you do this experiment and if your blood sugar changes, then dehydration is a primary contributing factor to your diabetic symptoms and, listen to this, this is very important, until you fix your hydration, anything you, any other activity you take to affect your blood sugar is pretty much a waste. It you're going to be fighting against yourself like running with weights. So first thing is you got to deal with dehydration if that's an issue. And it, and it usually is with people. I, I remember in, when I was running my health practice, I used to ask people if you drank a lot of water. That is a wrong question to ask. Then I started asking them, you know, like how many... I'd go get a glass and I'd say, is this the glass you drink, bigger or smaller? And I'd get a glass that approximated what they were drinking. And I'd ask them, how many glasses like this of water do you drink a day? It was appalling how little water people drink. I typically drink, uh, for every pound of my body weight, I drink between one to two ounces of water per day. So, you know, if you weigh 100 pounds, that's 100 to 200 ounces of water a day. That is a lot of water for most people. I also eat mostly high water content fruits and vegetables. I've been eating vegan for you know, decades, and so is my wife. And I also, one of my primary foods is superfood brews. So this is um, high water can content also. So my level of hydration is just out the roof. And if you'd like to dramatically affect your uh, diabetes symptoms and get, them, get your sugar levels in line, then your first step along your track is going to be fixing your hydration level. So that's our, that's our homework. Your homework for today is fix your hydration level or do an experiment. And let's see, where do we go from here? Wow. Um, I guess I'll put some sort of link someplace about where you can email me or maybe I'll set up a mail list someplace. Anyway, if, if you found this, in, this video interesting and you'd like to go farther, because really diabetes is, it, it's just a good entry point to the entire conversation about 
really bringing your your health upscale. I mean, like out the roof upscale. So you know, if you're if you're really interested in that, and then I don't know, maybe, maybe after we get our go through the whole health upscale process, we talk about how to do the the same upscaling or up leveling of your uh, income production. Because I work from home and have for. I guess my first freelance gig was 1979. Whoa, 79, 89, 09, coming up on, well, that's that's a long time, almost 40 years. So maybe we'll talk about that, and maybe we'll talk about bringing your relationships up, up level. I, I choose to know. Uh, if you're interested in, in more, what would I call, uh, up leveling of, every sort of compartment or category or part of your life if you're interested in that then join the list and also tell other people to join the list and if there's enough interest then I'll keep going and if there's not well I guess I won't <laughs> it's all up to you um, anyway good to talk with you today about uh, the first step in reversing your diabetes